The Alberta Energy Regulator has finalized new requirements to manage oil and gas liability, trying to avoid the industry's abandonment of orphan wells. It's been a big problem for the province. Uh, the AER is calling these uh, regulatory changes a major milestone for Alberta. Uh, Drew Uchuk, who's a staff lawyer at the Public Interest Law Clinic at the University of Calgary, begs to differ. Welcome to the interview, Drew. Thanks for having me again. Well, look, uh, give us a brief overview of the changes that the AER is announcing, please. So this isn't really a new or a very new thing. This is them slowly rolling out the policy direction they were given by Alberta Energy in July 2020. So we're more than a year past when they announced they were going to make these changes. The Alberta Energy Regulator seems to have been consulting with industry and working internally to figure out how to do this. And they released this draft, I think, back in June 2021. And now it's been finalized in basically the same format, except for some typo and wording fixes, that it was announced then. So this is the third time we've seen the Alberta government announce this as the incredible change that's going to fix the problem. But when it was initially announced in July and then again in June, it, it was mostly panned by people who were able to look at it. And one of the difficulties is that the AER is quite secretive about their figures and how they set the numbers. So one of the key figures we have here is what starts at 442 million, the uh, uh, liability management program, I think it's called, which is gonna replace the old area-based closure program. And they won't really say exactly how they got that number. It's related to the estimated inactive liabilities, but how it's related, I, I'm not totally sure. The best estimate anyone can get is that it's between four and 5% of current industry inactive liabilities, only the inactive liabilities, which is one of the, the core problems. Uh, and then it's going to increase slowly 5% year to year. So let's set the, uh, the table here, Drew. The, the idea is that uh, the, the AER wants to know if companies have enough resources to clean up the wells when they come to the end of, end of life and they need to be reclaimed. Is that that's correct? Um, that uh, only partially, because it still doesn't implement the whole policy change. So what they're implementing now is a change to license transfers. When licenses move from one uh, licensee to another, the AAR is assessing their overall ability to cover the cleanup liability. But they aren't proactively going after the companies for the liabilities they're currently sitting on, which would require them to just send basically bills saying, we need a security deposit immediately. That's been pushed down the road until who knows when. They haven't, they haven't set a date for when to do that. So they're still at this point trying to stop the bleeding. So if I understand this correct, I mean, there's been a lot of criticism in the in, uh, of the industry where wells that are at the, at the end of their life and carry li environmental liabilities are sold from bigger companies to much smaller companies. And eventually those companies go, go broke at leaving the, uh, the abandoned wells. They're, they become orphan wells and then they have to be paid through the, or, uh, paid, the cleanup has to be paid for by the Orphan Well Association or government, which is now, by my calculation, put in over $2 billion to do this. Have, have I got that right? Uh, yes, very close. Um, a few variances is that before selling the wells, rather than selling the wells to other companies, there's been a few instances where they just spun off a subsidiary to carry away their liabilities, which is funny to me because that is the scheme that free men on the land always get thrown out of court for trying to do as individuals, but oil companies several times have pulled it off. Uh, and the 2 billion number I think is not quite right because I think the Orphan Well Association has taken uh, 535 million, some of which has been paid back. And the billion was for the inactive liabilities, but not orphans, which is almost stranger because the inactive liabilities still belong to solvent companies. So it, it, it's not obvious to me why government chose to provide such a large billion dollar grant for that. Yes, I was referring to the 1.7 billion that the federal government provided, but of course that includes other provinces as well. 
So yeah. and uh, that that's almost I think almost all of that went to inactive but not orphan wells. Yeah. Okay. So what has the system fundamentally changed, or are we talking about tinkering around the edges uh, of the existing system? I would say this is tinkering. They are trying to use the same approach they used before, which is to collect no security until a company starts presenting problems and then try to get security. Um, they are now going to try to assess a variety of measures of solvency and the they're going to try to catch the companies before they go down the drain slightly earlier than they used to. Uh, one of the problems is that's, a, that's going to be extremely difficult. They're going to be basically analyzing the value of each oil and gas business in the industry repeatedly every couple months to see when it's about to run into trouble. They're, they're going to be trying to like pick stocks consistently. It, it's, it's not going to work in my view. Now, um, I've uh, seen a, no a number of uh, international uh, consulting firms, Drew, have put out analyses in the last little while saying, we forecast that the 2020s will be very good for oil and gas companies. We think the prices will be high. They'll be swimming in uh, free cash flow. And the, then there's some recommendations or what to do with that cash. So it seems like if you were ever going to have these companies put up a, a security uh, against their liabilities, now would be the time to start doing it because the, the consulting firms think that after 2030, prices are going to drop and it's going to be much more dire for, for the industry. And if all the AER is going to tinker, do is tinker, this spells disaster uh, down the road. Uh, I have not seen those exact reports, but I would say that that aligns exactly with what I think. The province needs to have the inactive well problem, the orphan well problem, and the actually the liability for the active assets fully in control by the end of the 2020s or the province's, I, I can't think of a polite way to say it, but uh, the province is in deep, deep trouble. Uh, the AER's plan appears to believe that inactive liabilities will continue to grow 5% year over year for the next four years. And they're not emptying out the orphan inventory either. Uh, so I, I just don't understand where they think they're going. Their strategy might make sense if the oil and gas industry was going to be strong for another 75 or 80 years. But on what we're looking at, I don't get it. Well, Drew, thank you very much for your insights. Always appreciate it. No problem.